All right, happy Friday to you all. Welcome to Character Sculpting uh, 1. This is a beginner course. Uh, if you are not able to make the class as usual, these classes have been recorded for you and are on the YouTube link in the chat and in your Brightspace apps. All right, so you can watch the uh, the the live classes that I've done there. They should all be posted there. There's a link to the playlist. If you are also not on the Discord, join the Discord as well. I like to do this every time just for the people who might not be watching the class, you know, but for the first time sometimes. So uh, making sure that even they are, uh, they're in the loop, all right? Cool. All right, so, you know, I'm um, getting people let me know that uh, they're not gonna be able to make it. Perfectly fine. You know, I, I appreciate you guys letting me know that you're not going to be able to make the class. Watch it like I just said on the YouTubes. You guys are familiar with that now. All right. So this Friday, um, let me start by addressing um, some of some more of the ZBrush stuff. Um, still, there there's an issue with the school ZBrush. Um, I got an email from um, somebody at the service desk uh, letting me know that you guys have been getting in contact with the IT department, um, and they are on it as well that their licenses, for some reason, have expired, and they're trying to renew it, which doesn't make any sense, all right, uh, in my opinion. But you should just have these licenses ready to go, and these kids should be able to just hop on the computers. All right, that's neither here nor there. Hopefully, they're solving that. But like I said, in the meantime, if you do not have the access to ZBrush, that's not, the, that's not an excuse, right? Because there is a free version. The things that I'm doing here, right? The sculpting parts are doable on ZBrush Core Mini or ZBrush uh, Mini, all right? And here's another way, right? I know that, you know, this could be, you know, um, a little difficult trying to find a way to get it, but we are in like the last under 30 days of this class, right? At this point, if you have a computer at home, if you have something at home, you can download a trial of ZBrush, right? You can go to their site, download a trial of ZBrush. I will post a link on how to do so, right? It'll give you 30 days. 30 days is way more than you'll need for this class, all right? So if you can't get it, once again, here's the, here's the third way you should get it now, right? ZBrush, get the trial version. It'll give you 30 days. You'll be able to complete the assignments. If you feel like you're not getting what you need out of ZBrush Core Mini, you don't like the, the, the lack of functionality and you have to have the ZBrush, well, go get yourself a copy of ZBrush, the trial. It should be 30 days. If you haven't used it before, if you have, you can sign up with a different uh, email account. I know you got a mom. I know you got a dad. I know you got a brother, sister, friend, dog, cat. Make a new Google email. And, and get yourself on ZBrush, all right? Uh, we've done a little bit of housekeeping on that end. Hopefully, you guys are still uh, posting to your chat. Sorry about that noise. Um, hopefully, you guys are still posting to your threads um, and then uploading the images to the server. Hopefully, you guys have taken uh, your assignments, you're, you're, you're working on those uh, base meshes and getting your sculpting bona fides uh, essentially up, right? That's what this class is about, getting you guys more comfortable with sculpting in general, all right? Um, and it's a, it's unfortunate that we're, we're having to deal with so many software issues, which is what usually you're going to have to deal with a lot of the times in the industry. So, all right, without further ado, let us get back to um, our, our big guy here, all right? So, um, let's see, last class, what we did is we went on pure ref, uh, we found some, some back anatomy, some leg anatomy, and we started adding some different uh, musculature to our character. If you remember, I showed you guys the parts of the leg that I was looking at and the parts of the back that I was looking at, all right? If you saw this, this is deja vu, all right. It's Friday. Give me a break, guys. Give me a break. It's Friday. All right, let's do this. Let's do this. Um, so today, I want to attack 
some of the parts of the body that give people, uh, you know, some some of the most uh, heartache and grief, which is hands and feet. All right. So there are very, very, um, there's a lot of different approaches that people take, but there's a few basic things that you need to know about the mechanics of the the feet and the hands, right? Uh, there are the tarsals, the metatarsals, and then the phalanges, all right? The tarsals right here, that's the biggest bone in your foot, right? They, they connect to the joint, and then those connect to your metal metatarsals, right? And then your phalanges, and those are like the little digits, all right? So those are the, the those are the basic uh, anatomy points of the 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 foot. All right. So now let's look for one for the hand. All right. And like I said, guys, when you're doing any of this stuff, start with finding right good reference for yourself. I'm gonna do it every time. Y'all gonna be tired of this, right? Y'all gonna be tired of me saying, well, find you some reference. Find some reference. It's very important. It's very important to find reference. All right. So let's look at the, the, the arm right here. All right. So this is the body of the ulna between the elbow, uh, ul olecranon, and the distal head of the ulna. All right. So this is the head of the ulna right here. That's your hand. If you put your hand out the same way this guy is doing it, right, you can find these points of on the bone and you can start using this when you're making your characters, right? So this is the body of the ulna, right? And then a lecronon right here. It sounds like a dope name or dope, a name for a metal band. But and then you can see it when it's foreshortened in different uh, in different views right here. Right. This is the two main groups of that muscle. Right. So right over that bone. Right. There's there's a muscle right over here. And the thing is, when once you start seeing things like this, breaking it down for you, are like, OK, so if I think about putting two muscle groups on the arm, it'll cover me to a certain extent, right? You have to then think about, okay, if it's turned this way, this way, but at the very basic, right? I'm trying to tell you guys, just learn the basics of some of these, these parts and it'll get you a long way there, right? So making hands more, uh, more natural looking, right? Uh, make the middle finger and the ring finger look like their best friends to get a more natural look. Uh, the thing with our character is he's only got three fingers. So that's gonna be a little harder to do. I might just do like <laughs> what they got here. Do this claw. <laughs> claw deal, maybe remove this guy, right? To get something more uh, more natural looking. But uh, let's look at the, the anatomy and some of the dynamics of the finger, all right? So when we're talking about the finger, right? We've got a hard, part of it, we're going to imagine that on our, all of our fingers, right, there's a center line right there. And we've got the hard portion, which is this part, this part, this part, where the bone is, where that bony part is. And under, right, that's the soft part. And when it bends, you get some of these creases and these folds that happen there, right? So these are the kind of things, guys, you guys should be paying attention to whenever you're sculpting, putting that little bit of fold right there on the finger well it might sell it a little bit uh, a little bit more and that's the same thing here when you're looking at the dynamics of the finger you can see those points right right you can see the points of those digits and then when they start to flex bend and how the joints help them articulate right so the way our, our joints bend and articulate it depends on how that joint and that bone come together what tendons are holding it uh, together, right? And now here's a, another look at the palm, right? So I have gathered a bunch of reference and this reference, once again, is available to all of you, right? And if you feel like supporting some of these guys, right, the guys who make this, they're called Anatomy for Sculptors, right? These guys make books and I think they have like a website or something that they do, but these guys are awesome, awesome, awesome. They combine all this stuff for us uh, to make our jobs and our lives a lot easier. All right. So here's the anatomy uh, of a fist. Right. And and I told you last week, right, the, the reason why hands and things are so hard is because 
there's so many positions that they can be in. They're they're a very, very interesting body part, right? Because it has all of these little phalanges and they can dance and they can move and they can rotate and turn and do different things. So as an artist, you're having to understand and learn a lot. And if you don't know it and can, um, you know, do it very well, well, you know what's going to happen? Well, you're going to get some AI looking hands, right? Like, that's, you know, there's a there's a, a thing where you, even AI has a <laughs> problem doing hands. So it's one of those things that's hard uh, for a lot of different reasons, all right? So let us get into the sculpting portion. All right, we've talked about, we've talked through it a, a little bit, and now let's get to uh, how I would go about sculpting it, all right? So I would usually start, because of the way my uh, T pose is, right, or my, um, I think it's like an A pose, I think that's what they call this, it's, like it's kind of relaxed. A T pose is when the arms are straight out to the side, right? I don't want to get you guys messed up on terminology, right? So this is more like an A pose, kind of a relaxed uh, pose, right? And then if the then if the hands are down and it's animated, you can have like an idol or something, right? This these are just terminologies thrown out there. All right. But when I start with the hand, all right, um, I like to go to the to the to the top portion of it, and I'm looking at my reference now. All right. So we've already kind of done this part with the with the the radius and the ulna where we added those two muscle groups, right? That kind of uh, that kind of connect together all right let me shift to smooth this out i'm just doing a little too much there and then we have where the ulna meets right there all right so for the hand where it connects i'm looking at this reference right here all right so what i'm going to start to kind of marker in is maybe some of these little uh tendons right some of these depressions maybe skinny it up right here pull it out right there all right just to show you what that would look like in uh, in real time and working, right? Boom, I'm gonna go to B, C, B. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. calm down, calm down. B, C, B. Get my clay build up tool going, all right? Got my clay build up and right, I've got my hand now what I can do is if I well if I hold down shift and control at the same time boom I can isolate I can isolate my hands here all right so now reduce the size of this I'm still on my clay build up uh, tool and where the hand is right here maybe just start adding a little bit a little bit of clay there, alt, right, to remove, and then building up the clay. All right, and as you can see, I'm starting to draw real thin on this geometry, right? This geometry is doing a lot of work, right? And this is when you can start to start make that decision, well, maybe I might need to go up one subdivision, right? Me, knowing me, I might, I might just go through, I might just be like, I might thug it out and just go, all right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do my shapes in this low state, right, in anticipation, and the cool thing is a lot of this guy comes with some good topology already for it, so if you look, the hand already kind of has the knuckle topology already, right, so it's already helping me to do the things that I need to do, so I just need to, you know, go ahead and add that, Right, this is our knuckle right here, right? Oof, it's rough, it's rough. I know I know it's rough, I know it's rough, just bear with me. I know it's rough, <laughs> you know? It looks like he's got spikes, but that's because I'm doing it at, at, at such a low resolution that it is giving me this. So now, like I've got something here, and this is a little, it's a little janky, so I'm gonna smooth it out a little bit, all right? And you guys will see what I mean now. So let me go sub-tool. I'm gonna go I'm actually, I'm gonna go to my geometry. I'm gonna increase my subdivision by one. All right, you see that? All right, now I've kind of given myself those markers. So I'm gonna now go back again. All right, uh-huh, shift smooth. 
when I pull it out, I've got a little too, it's too, a little too intense for me. Shift. And I, I did the same, I reduced the intensity of the smoothing as well. All right. So shift to smooth now. All right. Same thing here. And I kind of want to give them kind of like more claws, kind of kind of a vibe. So I'll, I'll address that here in a second. I'll use an extracted piece of mesh from it to make uh, to make what I'm trying to make. Let's turn off this poly frame. All right. All right. So now I'm going to go through increase these brackets a little bit. Just shift smooth it out. All right. All right. It's there, but I want it to be subtle. All right. I'm gonna go BMV, and I kind of want to pull these out a little bit more. All right, I did want them to be a little more, more claw-like. All right, so I'm gonna go BCB again. All right, now I might increase. Just the roundness of that knuckle a little bit, right? So that I can depress some of these areas. All right. Smooth. Smoothing out some of these sections. All right. All kind of. You guys see kind of what I'm going for, where it's like more, more claw-like, more, more. You know, the other way kind of looked kind of soft and gumby-ish, right? I want this guy to look like man. If he if he comes at you, you really don't you don't want him. The first thing he does to be to grab on you, you know. So. Now I'm just adding right those softer parts. Remember, hard on this, you know, on this outside part, hard, right? And then on this inside, soft, right? That's how you guys should treat uh, this part of uh, the model, right? Soft on the inside, soft and doughy, right? And then kind of a harder. On the outside all right so now I'm just gonna kind of do an even smooth all right, I'm gonna go find the a reference of the, the palm that I was looking at it's pretty good pretty good info there here we go so here's the palm all right so it's got some some very interesting shapes that I'm gonna try to capture in my own uh, model, all right. Me one second. Oh no, momento. Sorry about the pause. 
Got to get this little dog out of here. All right. All right. So let's look at the the palm. Sorry about that. Here we go. So let's start uh, adding in some of this little soft padding that it's got going on in here. So I've got instead of four, I'm gonna have my little my little pads. All right. You've got one that kind of goes like so right across. You know, and then this is the the one that, you know, all those fake astrologers tell you that it means something about your life. All right. Let me increase this, the strength of my smooth. There we go. There we go. And this one's got a little, it's got its own. All right. Okay, so that's, uh, you know, good enough for now. It's not, you know, it's not going to be a super detail because we're still at a very relatively low um, subdivision level. All right, so gonna maybe add some of these tendons coming out of here like so. All right, reduce the size, maybe do a, the opposite, right? Do an alt, All right? And that gives me a little more... All right, so for the fingernails, here's what I, I like to show you guys how to do. All right, so I'm gonna hit, hold down control, right, to, to what control does is it's my mask, all right? So with control, I can create these masks. So I'm gonna start painting a mask where these fingernails kind of supposed to go, all right? And what I can do with these masks is using uh, my subtool features here, I can extract this mesh, right? So if I hit extract, you can see that it gives me a nice size mesh. And then you can increase the thickness of the mesh, right? However you want. You can increase the smoothing. You can either double or uh, make it a double-sided surface, right? Corner quads uh, to tries, and you can use this button to accept it so let's see what it looks like now so every time you do a new change or something to it you're gonna want to see what it looks like so if I move it or something or you know I paint it and I do something over here where the the smooth is or the thickness is I need to hit extract again to see what it looks like so now that I've extracted that I like this ah, this looks cool I'm going to go over here accept now what that's going to do is it's going to add it to my subtool panel here, right? Here's my subtool panel. Boom. Right? This is how you would add it, right? If I were using ZBrush Core Mini so I don't leave you guys out and I don't, you know, leave you guys out, I would just sculpt it into the mesh, right? I wouldn't make an extract or anything like that. I wouldn't worry about that. If I was using ZBrush Core Mini to make this model, I would literally just do it all on one model, go go bananas, you know, with the with the single mesh and keep just keep subdividing till I get kind of what I want. All right. So now, okay, the reason that the reason that it's black is because it's taking the basic material color that's over here. All right. So now if I uh, throw, that, throw that all the way up, it's going to have that same gray that everything else does. 
And if you don't notice it, it still has that mask on it, right? So the cool thing about this is if it's still, if you don't uh, get rid of that mask, you can still do some, um, you can still do some uh, modifiers after the fact before you lose that mask. So I can do stuff like I can deform it so I can maybe, you know, if I needed to maybe inflate it or something and keep those edges intact, I can do that, right? So your mask is till, still intact right here. If I hit control, you can see that I'm toggling back and forth from my mask, all right? To get rid of my mask, I'm gonna hold down control and I'm just gonna draw a little square outside of it. Now my mask is gone. I've got my extracted fingernail here. And the beauty about ZBrush is that, guys, whenever I make something new, the whatever mesh it's lying next to, because of the, the normal relationship, it reacts to that um, to that piece of mesh. So if I if I go to this piece right here and I start sculpting, you'll see that it starts to kind of respect the fact that I have this nail there, which is good for you guys because it makes your job a little bit easier, right? So it's acting like, oh, that nail is definitely there. There's something there, even though it's not on the same. Uh, it's not on the same mesh. So this is something cool that uh, that you guys can definitely utilize to make things look, you know, more real. All right, because it looks like it's integrated into there. It's you know, it's you, you're not having to do too much uh, to make those those connections look uh, look good. And and the thing about it is, as you guys see, like you can quickly start to um, get to a point where the geometry starts to wear thin. Right, you can quickly get to a point, but it's up to you to decide when you're ready to go to that next that next subdivision step. Right, I like to wait till I have, man. I'm I've stretched it. I, I've used it as much as it can be used and abused, and you know I've I've, I've stretched it. I'm seeing polys at this point. I, you can count it on one finger the amount. You know that's the level I go to before I go to that next subdivision because. Every subdivision that you add makes it harder to make changes. That's something I'm trying to get, get across to you is the reason why I work so low a lot of the times is when you get to the subdivision threes, the subdivision fours, if your, your, your model is starting to be 2 million, 3 million, 4 million, 5 million, 6, you know, we can, the computers can handle it, but the amount of detail that you're going to be able to put into it is gonna be a lot different and you're not gonna be able to change the form as quickly as much and have it look uh, look natural, all right? So right now looking at this angle, um, this, this, this little middle finger kind of looks a little gnarly. So I'm gonna use my move tool um, to kind of get it, get it back looking a little better, all right? So I just kind of wanna move, oh, whoops, I don't have it selected. All right, Alt on whatever sub tool you wanna work on. So I'm gonna Alt click the nail if I want to work on it, I'm going to alt click the the body if I want to work on it. Hopefully I've I've said this several times before, I'm just reiterating it. All right. So, let's uh what 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 do I have on? Oh, move tool, BCB. No, oh, BCB. Build up. All right. Yeah, it's weird because the way I that's how I remember them. I like I remember them as like little um <laughs> little acronyms. <laughs> so, you know, that's uh that's how my brain works. Everybody's work, brain works a little bit different, you know? So I learned, you know, a lot differently than a lot of people. Like I have to do stuff a bunch of times before I like finally get it, like before I finally understand what it is. So I, I usually try, I like to take my time with stuff, you know? Um, I like to take my time, but I also like to go really fast. <laughs> so I like try, you know, I try to ba balance that. Um, that need for speed and, uh, you know, making really good work. So it's a balance that you're going to have to kind of solve yourself as well. It's like, all right, I need to make this look good, but it's also due or there's also a deadline or I've also got like 15 other things I want to do. How much time do I really want to spend on this? Cause you know, there's, it's never really done, right? Like the, what you'll learn is like, it's never, you can always put more, you can always texture a little extra here. You can always put a little more, you know, you can always add an extra vein. There's always an extra level of something you can do, right? When are you willing to call it quits? When do you say, all right, this is good enough. Let me move on, right? And don't paralyze yourself 
with, uh, with indecision, all right? So I'm just going around my hand here. And you guys can see, like, this for such a little part of the body, like, it, it takes a, a lot of understanding, all right? You know, at least you guys don't, you're, you know, this isn't a draw the hands class. <laughs> this is a sculpted class. You sculpt at one time, right? Like, the idea, the, the beauty of our job is that, like, you do this one time, right? And then you're done, right? Like, the animators can put it in whatever position they want to put the fingers in. If you're, like, a 2D artist, yo, you got to know how to draw that stuff, you know? Like, so you got to, you know, you kind of give, got to give those guys a little bit of respect, you know, because... They have you. You only got to model it one time, and then the computer does the rest. You, you, you know, you're kind of off the hook after that. <laughs> so here, though, oh man, with those 2D guys, that's respect because they have to do that over and over, different shots, different takes. You know, like yeah, that's that's rough. Like, you know, sometimes people have a problem nailing it one time. You expected me to nail it, you know from 15 different angles and, you know, there's a lot of, you know, there, there are a lot of challenges in CG too that like are, um, are very unique to us, right? Uh, a big thing that you'll notice about our industry is hair is like a big thing. It's like when people want to show off that they're making something cool, oh, they show off their hair, the hair physics, you know, cause that's like a mark of something difficult. It's like, Look at how we're handling hair, and everybody's like, "Ooh, ah, fancy!" You know, like that's that's kind of our thing. It's like hair, hands, you know, those uh, those kind of things definitely give people and artists a lot of issues. You know, artists dedicate whole books to hands. <laughs> Let's see if we can bring these nails out, make them like, kind of like, uh, like witch nails, B and B. Make them like, yeah, you go. See what I'm talking about? Whoops. So kind of like that. There we go. Where if you come close, ooh, them things will pierce ya. Them things will pierce ya. You know, so. Um, so another thing you can do is like, you see how I've got like this little under cowl here? And that's because of how the, the mesh was, was created. So there's a few things I can do. I can shift smooth it like that, right? To get that nail kind of thing back. And then a little bit later on, I'm probably gonna Z remesh it again, right? So my hands are good for now. They're not perfect, but they're a solid start. You know, they're a solid, solid start. I got my nails on, got my nails did, you know, got the hands going, got my palms red. I mean, this, this guy's coming along. All right, let's go to the feet. All right, and this guy has more alien-like feet, but we can still learn, uh, learn some things from other, some, some, some the reference we have. So I'm going to pull up some feet reference and um, let's go to town. Let's go to the foot. All right. So this is how the foot articulates, as you guys can see, with the calf muscle as the uh, gastro sin. Oh, gastro simius and the sol solus muscle contract. They create plantar Flexi, uh, flexion, enabling heel lifting for walking or jumping. Oh, that's why people get plantar fasciitis. Okay, that's where it is. All right. All right, cool. So this is the muscle uh, for the calf. This is how it connects. We, we went over a lot of this uh, last class, the two big uh, heads of the, the muscle. If you missed that class, it is on the tubes. All right, that's YouTube, for those who don't know. All right, let's find some uh, good feet anatomy to use. Right, so this one's okay, but not. 
it just kind of shows us the structure of what's going on, right? Man, look at this. Imagine having to draw this. Like, what have what what has you making a claw? <laughs> good stuff all right i think i found some good stuff there we go like right here all right this is about the fibula bone but i'm looking at it for the foot all right and as you guys can see it does similar things right to where you've got a little bit of hard here but a lot of this is kind of softer and then you've got kind of a hard bone right here and then you've got the bend the joint right there tarsals phalanges and the metatarsals all right yeah and this is this is crazy the fact that women's feet do this to put it this way you, you gotta you gotta give them respect man like i'm not gonna walk around like this all day long like all day tiptoeing around like that's whoo that's rough women more power to you all right let's get it all right so we got our foot reference let's let's dive in let's dive in Okay, and this guy's kind of got like a nubbin. He's got like a nubbin toe back here. So like this nubbin might be, you know, might be a claw like that. So I think I'm going to do this a similar aesthetic, right, to the foot. And the foot, you know, isn't that crazy either, you know, you, because he's only got like, you know, a BCB. Goes, he's only got like two toes. So like really there's only going to be like, two bones that really two giant bones that really connect them right if i'm thinking of how that anatomy would uh would work all right and then oh, 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 oh see this what's that what am i doing wrong there's no symmetry right so control z let's go back let's go back all right Ooh, made a mistake that would have been that would have been a rough one that would have been rough because then we have to re-symmetry it and blah, blah, blah. You know, which I might need to show you just in case you run into that one day. All right? If you, like, accidentally, like, you've been, you, you just going crazy on one side and didn't realize it didn't, it didn't take on the other side because you didn't throw on your symmetry. See, like, this is what happens is then you're, you're like, oh, no, it doesn't look the same. All right. I can show you how to get your, uh, get your changes back all right um so let us continue so now we've got our symmetry turned on i'm not a noob all right i'm going to take a gander a good gander at my reference here oh, this one's pretty good it's kind of close to the the view i have all right so if you guys if you are looking for it this is the one i'm talking about all right it's got a good view because i can kind of see you know, because it's super smooth. Like, he's got maybe a vein or two. So, like, and then, ooh, there's a divot right there. All right. Let's, uh, let's, let's throw some of that action in here and see what it looks like. All right. So, he's got kind of like a divot right here that kind of goes like that. All right. A depression. And then I think, all right, that's because, all right, my, the, the bones, there's nothing else. But you do have this thing. So I'm guessing there's like a bone right here. The thing is, I'm drawing it on the outside, but you're imagining it on the inside, right? That's what you guys should be imagining is this, the bones and stuff, I'm doing it on the outside, but that's because when I smooth it out, right? I, I like to explain why I'm doing it. So that when I smooth it out, it looks like there's the impression of that bone there, right? It's not supposed to be, you know, super showy, but what it does is it gives you that impression, that feel, like, okay, there is that underlying structure there. And that's what you want to achieve, right? I'm guessing he's going to have, like, maybe a little, little soft pads right here. That would be my be my guess. A little soft. Maybe this one's because the toe would be a bigger, bigger, soft, you know, softer toe pad. Let's increase our... Uh, Smoothing a little bit. There we go. Like 
like so. Just adding some padding over here. Actually, I'm gonna. go trying to kind of just kind of shape it a, a little more all right let's do some softer bottom pads all right and then like so like so and then like so whoops and you know you might want to go in whenever you're making your own. You want to variate them a little bit because they're not the same size. So, um, oh, my shift, my smooth is too much now. So I need to, it's at 55 and bring it down to 15. Just so. You see how it's gone but not really gone, right? Like that's the idea. It's like you're, you're subtly, you're supposed to be subtly giving this information. Right, like you're supposed to just subtly be like, oh, okay, that's there. Now we can go, I'm gonna maybe do a little uh, Damien Standard, all right, BDS, all right. Um, that's the, that's how you get there, all right. Here we go, all right. See what I'm talking about? Now it looks like we've got, right, those, those fat pads on the bottom. And then I can do the same to the top where, boom, like so. Um, uh. All right, just to give like that hint of, oh, there's a structure under there. Increase that smooth, let it come back down. All right. And this kind of looks kind of gnarly. So then. I think I'm gonna kind of do something where I'm gonna go drastic with this guy. I think I need to go drastic. All right, let's increase the, the smooth. Boop. Let's smooth this bad boy out. There we go. Because right, I've been inspired by that seeing that lady stiletto. This guy's got a rock of stiletto now. Gasta. Say B M B. Let's move this bad boy. She can do it. You can do it too, bruh. All right. So like, see how hard it is to kind of try to move some of this stuff with that. But if I go down in subdivisions, just one, it just makes it so much easier to move some of these pieces around. All right, and I'm just using this to kind of re retool the foot with massive, massive movement. All right, so you might want something maybe like that. I'm trying to think. All right, what's uh? All Okay. Oh man, I didn't realize what time it was. All right. Um, let me do what I was gonna do then. All right. So I'm just gonna smooth this little piece out right here, and I'm gonna go ahead on and uh, 
Control Z, B, Z, B. Let's not slow walk this. I'm going to do the same thing, right? Like that. And then you can start going in and adding, you know, a little bit of folds, a little bit of little fat deposit. And now let's make the toes claws real quick and then I'll call it a, a day. Right, as you guys can see, a lot of this isn't some fancy tools, just a move tool, right? The build up tool. All right, it's all you're using. These, you know, I, you don't need to go buy some fancy brush for some fancy artist, right? Just use the ones that are in here. You will be more than fine, trust me. If you need to go buy some fancy schmancy brush, you're not a very good artist. The only thing brushes do is enhance the skills you already have. So for me, it's always better for you to just have the prerequisite skills, right? ZBrush, remember guys, is just a tool. I can do this inside of ZBrush Core Mini. I can do this inside of whatever software I need to do it in just because just because I know how to sculpt in general. It's not, um, all right. So we're starting to get somewhere. Um, the last thing I'll do, uh, I got two minutes left. I'll quickly make this nail, this little nail portion. Ooh, it's gonna be cool. Nail here. Ooh, I think we'll give him a back nail too. Cause it'd be, it'd be weird if he just had a nubbin, right? We don't want the little nubbin to, <laughs> So we'll give him a, we'll give homeboy toenails on every thigh. All right, now let's go down to our extract. Remember, we've got it on smoother 5.00294 is our thickness. Depending on the size of your mesh, it might be different. Don't take these words and take them as gospel that you have to use them for every single extract mesh you do. That's not how it works depending on the size and scale of the mesh you bring in is going to be determining the size of the thickness that you see. So you're gonna to wanna to use your eyes and your vision to go, all right, that looks right, that doesn't look right, that fits, that doesn't fit, that's too thick, that's too skinny. That is your job. These are just tools, you are the artist. All right, I've already done these settings before, so I know that these settings particularly work. All I have to do now to make sure I've got it is the accept button and remember once again i have this mask whenever i extract it at first the moment i get off of it that um that mask is gone now to make our nail look like they're super pointy 
I'm gonna increase my uh oh, 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 oh whoops whoops take it easy boss all right BMV is the move tool and I'm just moving these end pieces right you just you're just gonna be moving these end pieces if you're making kind of like uh like toenails but these are kind of gnarly so I need to go let's go instead of perspective that didn't help me at all <laughs> I was trying to see the fingernails and I went to that it did not help all right so I just want to make it come out straight I want to see how that looks because like you know like nails they can grow in funky different ways too right like they can grow down, out, up, down, left, right. All right. That's fine. That's not bad. All right. Let's do the same for this back one. And then this one, maybe the, uh oh, it's too much. I just want to grab the, the bottom portion of it a little bit. It's like right there. There you go. Right? It's not too bad. It's not too crazy. All right. And then. All you need to do to make it look like it fit in a little bit, right? Just draw a little meat around it, right? B, you're going to go B, C, B, boom, right there. Act like I got some cuticles going here, all right? And then just, I'm going to hit Alt to make sure I've got my, this mesh selected. And when I start to build, you'll see that it builds around it, right? It builds kind of that around it. So now I can put my little, my little knuckle here, all right? And then I can throw this bad boy around like so. All right. And you see it's super crunchy right now. If I threw a subdivision on it, it would fit that thing perfectly. It would look smooth. It would look nice. Right. But ZBrush does a lot of the heavy lifting for us. Right. And, you know, if I had more time and, you know, this wasn't just a class just trying to show you this stuff, you know, I'd put a little love back here, you know, start to start to really fresh flesh this out a little bit more. But, you know, because we, we, we got to stop somewhere. We got to move on. We got to move on. I've got to show you what you need to kind of know to do what you need to do. So maybe smooth it a little bit. Uh, bring it back out. Smooth it a little bit. Bring it back out. Smooth a little bit and then bring it back out. And I'm following that philosophy of soft on the under, right? Soft under. Then it's a uh, hard transitions at the top. So from this knuckle, right? To this other little uh, digit right there, I'm gonna throw another little little piece in. Maybe then, boom, like so. So it looks like he's got maybe like even one more digit right in between there, right? Maybe there's like a digit right. There's like a knuckle right there, and then in between, right? And these are the things you guys should be seeing, right? I, you know, it's gonna, it's not gonna, it's something that took me a while to start being like, okay, that's what I'm looking for. That's what I'm trying to put there, right? But you don't get there if you don't practice this stuff, right? You don't get there if you don't put in your hours, right? You gotta put in the time. I promise y'all, if you put in the time, there, I, there's literally nowhere you're gonna keep getting bad, right? Like you, you can only get better at this stuff, right? This is one of those things that like, I was not a good artist when I first started this job. I, you know, I, I just wasn't like, that's not how my skills worked. It took me a long time of practicing, learning, doing over and over and over and over again, failing, 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 you know, not in the sense of failing my class, but failing at m m hitting the mark, making it look good. Right. I did a lot of ugly models before I got to a good looking model that somebody was even willing to pay me for. Let, it not, let alone look at, you know? So you guys have to get to that point too. You guys gotta practice. You guys gotta put the hours in. You not The thing is, I don't want you guys to think you're putting the hours in for me, right? Like it's not, I, I don't get the skills when you work, right? You're not gonna, you're not gonna practice, 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 and then Mr. Ty gets better. <laughs> That's not how this works, right? If you put in the work, I guarantee you, you are going to be a better artist. There's just no, like there's, it's like, that's how that works, right? So let's, uh, let me divide this. Uh, uh, okay, whatever, delete the lower and then divide. Oh, 
okay, what's going on? Okay, 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 okay. There was some stuff masked. Okay, okay, okay. I was like, why is it doing that? So when that happens, what what that means is, so let me let me isolate this. Oops. What happened was when I was trying to subdivide it, it was trying to sub subdivide everything that wasn't masked. Because I created those extractions, it automatically also creates masks on the object itself. So you got to remember that. So when I was trying to divide it, it's going to say, hey, you've got some stuff that's partially hidden or partially modified. If you try to do this, you're going to get some crazy results. And I'm like, Psh, get out of here. I'm going to do what I want. Well, it did not like that. So in the future, when you guys are doing this, uh, yeah, definitely unmask it, everything that you've got. So I'm going to control to unmask. Now if I divide, it's going to divide my model for me. And I'm going to take it out of solo so now you guys can see the other pieces. So now if I keep dividing, you can see that, uh, you know, that's what we got so far. So, you know, you can see that the geometry is increasing. So let me reduce that. Boom, boom, boom. One, two, three, four, five. Those are the subdivisions that I just added. All right. So, you know, we're going to keep this going, keep uh, building onto our character. Uh, I might even throw an accessory in here, like a staff or some sort of some sort. Um, you know, maybe you guys will help me come up with a, an idea for what his weapon can be. Maybe he holds a giant pair of scissors. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I want some interesting uh, ideas for weapons that, you know, you normally wouldn't see. You know, not a gun or something like that. You know, that's just too low hanging. Right. He needs something. He's got nails. So something that's accessible with nails. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, does anybody have any questions? If you don't, um, you guys are free to go. Happy Friday. Let me see. Oh, also sign up for the Gameathon. They've been telling me to tell you guys about this Gameathon thing, and I feel like if I don't say it, um, you know, that uh, Savannah is gonna come come get me, Sabitha. Uh, so yeah. Sign up for the Gameathon. Go to school and participate. Be a part of your community. All right? You're hearing it from me first. All right? All right. If you guys have any questions, I'm, I'm sorry, guys. I'm, I'm being extra this weekend. So. Is the Gameathon like esports or what is it? Uh, the Gameathon is where you go, it's like a game jam. Uh, mm. You go there, you're, you and a bunch of students, you guys make a bunch of. Uh, you you make some games and you can win. Um, I want to say uh, Game Pass to something or Xbox Live Pass or something. You win something. There's there is a prize. Huh? There's a prize. That's all I know. All right. So appreciate you guys. Um, have a great weekend. Hopefully you guys have something fun planned. I like the game a thon. Uh, uh, see how I brought it back. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Sorry, guys. You guys are free to go. I will see you guys on Monday. See you Monday. Monday. Yeah.